I am a science teacher, and I love my job. I got into this 13 years ago for the chance to inspire the next generation to become scientists. But sadly, at the beginning of my career, very few of the high school students I taught who went to college chose anything to do with science. And quite frankly, even from that small number, fewer of them persisted long enough to earn those degrees. And this perplexed me. This saddened me, even though it seemed to match what was happening elsewhere. Let me show you this graph. If this pie chart represents all of the high school students in America, then only this portion represents the high school students who are deemed proficient in science and math by the time they graduate. And the question then becomes, how many of them are even interested in a career in science and math? Well, it goes down to this proportion. By the time high school students graduate, only 17% of them are both proficient and interested in a career in science. So it's no wonder that we see outcomes like this, which comes from the National Center for Education Statistics. It says that 48% of the college students who chose a STEM major between 2003 and 2009, just a few years later, had either switched to something non-STEM or had dropped out completely. This bothered me, and honestly, it haunted me as a teacher until I stumbled on what I think is a part of the answer one day in my classroom. Imagine me for a moment standing in the front of my AP physics class, 18 of the smartest students at my school. And at the end of the lesson one day, I asked them, hey guys, what careers are you thinking about for when school is over? It's a physics class, so not surprisingly, more than half of them said some kind of engineering. And I don't remember what led me to ask the next question, but I was indelibly changed by the outcome. I asked them, sure, you guys want to be engineers. How many of you have ever met an engineer? Zero hands. In fact, let's do this test. For those of you that are here, how many of you actually know an engineer? Just like I thought, less than half of you. And then, even for those of you who know an engineer, ask yourself this question. Do you know what they actually do? I'll admit, one of my closest friends has been an engineer for almost 15 years. And even as an adult, even as a science teacher, I had no clue what he did until like a year ago. Sadly, this is the reality for many of the students who sit in our classrooms. And we see the same thing for science. Students tell me they want to be scientists because of some romanticized idea of what scientists do, but they have no clue. If we want to see education improve, then we have to fix this. That day I realized this is a glaring weakness in the way we do education. And I'm I was just as guilty as everybody else. I told my students, if you study hard enough, and if you learn this science, if you learn this math, you can become an engineer, but that's a world you can't see until you get there. If you study hard enough, if you pay attention, you can become a scientist, but don't worry about what scientists do. You will see that when you get there. We try to convince our students to prepare themselves for careers with very little information about what they're, what they're preparing themselves for. If there's any possibility that this is the barrier that separates our students from their careers, we cannot sit idly by and allow this to happen. We need to be able to build a bridge for our students from the classrooms they sit in to the careers they want to achieve. Now, I think art and, and music teachers are doing a better job of this. For instance, this picture from one of my best friends, She's an art teacher in Maryland where she's had her students display their artwork in the local gallery. Or we often read about the music teacher who gets his best students connected and playing along with the local symphony. In those ways, those students get a real taste for what it's like to function in those professions. But what does this look like for core teachers like science and math and English? I think the answer lies in harnessing the power of meaningful school 
university and industry partnerships. We need more of these stakeholders working together to bridge that gap. There are at least three ways that partnerships like these can help. Universities and industries can provide advice. They can give direct guidance on curriculum decisions, helping us as teachers refine our focus and ensuring that we're addressing the work skills and the content to prepare students for STEM, for STEM careers. A good example of this is the widening focus on coding in America, which came directly from industry recommendations. Industry said, we need more students who can code. Schools heard this and have responded. The second way is resources. Almost always, universities and industries have the resources that it takes to make learning difficult concepts more relevant for students. I'll let you in on a secret. Middle school students and high school students don't really care about cells. But they're more apt to learn about cells when they get a window into what cancer research looks like. Even my students aren't that interested in physics. But their excitement increases when I explain to them that football collisions can generate enough force to be brutally dangerous, and yet mechanical engineers are working now to design better helmets that are more protective. But the best part of this is that universities and industries have the ability to offer exposure. They can expose our students to these careers in very meaningful ways. And that's my story. I was unsatisfied with this in my classroom. And I searched for ways, how can I tear down this veil for my students? Until I landed in the gift program at Georgia Tech. The gift program partners teachers with university researchers and industry professionals. I was connected with Dr. Raquel Lieberman, a biochemist, and I work in her lab where we, where we use protein crystallography to study the molecular details of important proteins involved in Alzheimer's and glaucoma. I've learned a ton about proteins like myosilin and signal peptide peptidase, or about experiments like high-performance liquid chromatography. But the true magic happens when I return to my classroom. Every time I come back to my classroom, from my own experience, I am now equipped with those connections that can make learning meaningful for my students. I can point to experiments in the textbook and say, hey, look, guys, I did this. And I know why scientists do it. And this is why they do it. And in enough time, my passion becomes my students' passions. Even better. In the more recent years, I get to bring teams of my students with me for the summer. They spend five weeks in the lab actually involved in the process, designing the experiments, using sophisticated million-dollar equipment, collecting the results, discussing the conclusions. This picture is of Jose. Jose was one of the first students that came along with me. And I'm proud to tell you now that Jose is a student at Emory University studying forensic anthropology. I am supremely confident that his experience that summer solidified what he thought about a career in science and helped to bolster his confidence to pursue that career. I've kept this going now for six years, and ever since I've started it, I've been able to see the number of my students who choose STEM careers increase drastically. Just like I explained in the very beginning, almost none of them chose anything to do with STEM. And out of all my classes, I teach about 60 seniors a year. I've seen the number of them increase every year until last year, almost a third of my students have chosen STEM as their major. In fact, some of them have already earned those degrees and have moved on to those careers. Now, there are other ways to get involved. At places like the Think Academy in LaGrange, Georgia, or like our very own Career Academy in Douglasville, industry partners band together to fund innovative classrooms with industry-relevant equipment. And beyond that, experienced professionals lend their expertise to teach unique classes designed to increase workforce skills and prepare students for advanced careers like manufacturing. These programs have been shown to have an overwhelmingly positive effect on helping students know what careers they're getting into. Listen, 
I know I'm not the only one. I am not the only teacher interning in a lab. I'm not the only one doing something unique to connect my students to their careers. And career academies aren't the only way that industries can get involved. But what I hope is by telling these stories, they might motivate others who are not yet involved to become engaged. Make no mistake, this is a call to action. I'm sending out a charge for every university researcher, every industry professional out there, to find just one classroom that you can partner with in a meaningful way. Visit their school on more than just career day, and then open the door so that they can come and visit you in your place of work to actually see what you do. When that happens, we will see our students step out on a much firmer foundation, on sure footing as they make career decisions. We will see them much more enthusiastic about their learning, and we can see them have the confidence to pursue these careers. And as I close, I want to share with you that I think this model can impact every subject, not just STEM. What would it look like if the local newspaper reached out to the eighth grade English teacher and said, we're going to reserve a weekly column for nonfiction articles from your students. How many of those students will get the experience of what it feels like to be a journalist, to organize my thoughts, to get my point across succinctly, to edit my article appropriately, even to get my article in on time? And then how many of those same students will grow up thinking, wow, I want to be a journalist? We need more of this and not less. So promise me that you will help us harness the potential of meaningful school, university, industry partnerships, that you will help us build a bridge for our students from the classrooms they sit in to the careers they want to join. Thank you.